Why did they do it? Why? Why did they do it? And not, not only that, why did they do it so quickly? Why did Peter and Andrew and James and John immediately follow Jesus when they called Him, when He called them? Why? Oh, you're sitting out there, you're smugly saying, this must be a trick question, Father. Oh, we all know why they did it. It's Jesus. Well, they didn't know it was Jesus. This guy coming by, hey, follow me. And I'll make you fishers of men. Peter and Andrew were tossing their nets out. And especially on this Father's Day, I get a kick out of this second one. And uh, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. By the way, the word Zebedee means thunder. So they were literally the, the sons of thunder. I like that. I like that kind of, uh, I like that kind of thing. James and John are mending their nets with their father in the boat. And the scripture says, Jesus said, follow me. The Bible says, immediately, they left their nets and their father. I wonder if they knew it was Father's Day. They left their nets. Why did they do it? What could possibly motivate them? Now you say, oh, well, it's the, 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 the magnetic spirit of the Lord Jesus. And of course, that's probably part of it. But one of the reasons why I've contemplated this is because one of my greatest desires and one of my greatest joys is being a father. I love being a father. I like being a father more than anything in the world. I really do. I like being a dad. And I've always wondered what it was about being a dad that made me so happy that I enjoyed so much. Part of it is, I can tell these little ones to go get me a Sprite and they'll go get me. <laughs> but it fills me with great joy to be a father. And one of the most important things in my own life, because of my own upbringing, I did not have a good father. My dad was um, a, a drug addict and an alcoholic. And uh, he, was, he was the life of the party all the time. Great guy, lots of fun. If you met him, I guarantee you, you'd like him within five minutes. You would. Great fella. Unfortunately, never got beyond 16 as far as maturity. But he was a gregarious guy and a wonderful fella. He got great personality. And he just never could make it as a dad. It was one of the most life-defining moments of my own life. And make no mistake, brothers and sisters, it is of yours as well. Whether you have a good dad or a bad dad or an in-between dad or, or an absentee dad or a really attentive dad or a dad that you wish would stop singing songs in the Walmart. If they can't take a joke, flip on them. I like the way I sing. I mean, come on. The reason why this is so vitally important for your own formation is because the name that God takes upon Himself in the very, very beginning is Father. And many of us, brothers and sisters, all of us, brothers and sisters, every person in this room listening to my voice, in some very significant way, your view of God is shaped by your view of Father. Some of you are saying, oh no. Others are saying, eh, not bad. Others are saying, now I get it. The power of fatherhood and the power of a man... And by the way, I love what Jordan Peterson says about uh, a strong man. A strong man is a dangerous man. Did you understand that? A strong man, listen to me, a good man is a dangerous man. Do you understand me? A good man is a dangerous man. A good man will hurt you. But a good man has his life under control. But make no mistake, 
push a good man too far. Aonia imnimi. Jordan Peterson said that, and it rang true with me because there's something about the power of fatherhood. Now, we have spent the last several decades talking about how horrible the patriarchy is and how we need to, we need to, uh, to uh, dismantle the patriarchy and we need to, to fight the patriarchy and we need to, to stand against the patriarchy. And those men and you men... And some of it's rightly so, because sometimes men act horribly. But the problem is, when men are acting horribly, they are not acting like fathers. It's when they, have been, it's when they act horribly that they deny their true reality. And brothers and sisters, there's something about a man who has that kind of self-awareness in himself that he knows that dignity and honor is what actually defines his worth and his value. When you come across a man like that, there's something about it that says, I, 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 need, to, I need to pay attention to this guy. I grew up with a guy like that. Country is cornbread. If he had a fifth grade education, I'd be surprised. But old Bill could build a deck like you could not believe. And one summer I worked with him. No, no, that's not true. One summer I got in his way (laughs) and got him something cold to drink. And I watched that old man measure wood and cut and deal with customers. And I watched him interact with other people and his this guy this guy listen bill's big boy uh, he had to be six foot two six foot three and if he weighed less than 280 pounds i'd be shocked man had hands that twice the size of my hand big guy and i knew good and well if i got out of line that boy had the power to end me and yet the gentleness and the confidence of this man, and the confidence in he knew that he was what he was doing, and he knew who he was, and he knew that dignity and honor were more important than comfort and praise. And I watched that man conduct himself for a whole summer, and I said to myself, man, wouldn't that be great to be a guy like that? In the age where we have seen over and over again the blatant, demonic, satanic-fueled attack on men, we have to ask ourselves, why did the disciples immediately follow Jesus? And I'll tell you why. Because He possessed the image of the Father. Inside of them, they felt the spark and they felt the attention And they felt the affection, and they felt the attentiveness, and the honor, and the dignity of a father. I aspire to that. My girls have now become so used to hearing me say this that it's almost boring to them. Babe, you can count on me. You become an axe murderer, I'll still love you, I'll visit you in prison. No matter where you are in the world, no matter what's going on in your life, all I need is a smoke signal or a thought, and Daddy's coming running. You can always count on your father. You can always. You can always count on your father. There's something deeply broken about a society who has decided to denigrate men. Now, that doesn't mean that we excuse evil. That doesn't mean that we dismiss wrongdoing. That doesn't mean that we dismiss prejudice or we honor misogyny. We don't do that. Because a really good man understands that that which is opposite of him, the woman is equal in dignity and honor and value and worth. And when a man treats a woman less than in dignity and honor and worth, he stops being father. And he starts being master. 
but a society that has decided to denigrate men and crush men. In fact, brothers and sisters, did you under, do you understand that the crisis in young men in this country has now gone to astronomical proportions? Young men striving for, for some kind of purpose and meaning in their life, and they're grasping for everything. Did you know that men are deciding not to get married? Do you know why? Because they've been told they're horrible creatures and no woman would want them. Over and over again, we've seen this caustic, satanic, demonic attitude. All in the name of what they call justice or equality. To use, to, be, to browbeat men. And it is a sin, my angels. If you have a good father, if you know a good man, you know one of the most precious treasures on the planet. A wise man once said that strong times create weak men. Weak times create strong men. Guess where we are now? On this Sunday where we hear that the disciples followed Jesus immediately. It's because, brothers and sisters, inside of them, because they're created, because you're created in the image of God, the Father. We say it every creed, don't we? I believe in one God. Who? The Father. They sensed they, they were in the presence of Father. And they immediately followed Him. The Apostle Paul writes in our epistle lesson today that the Gentiles who follow the law of God do it because it's something that's written in their hearts. By God's grace, we have been blessed with good, strong fathers in our lives, many of us. Some of us, not so much. But every one of us have been given an image of the true father that corrects even the faults of our own earthly father. If we only have the courage to turn our eyes away from our pain and towards him who lives forever. On this Father's Day, they left everything they had because they sensed they were in the presence of the Father. Men, huh, sell whatever you have to sell. Do whatever you have to do. You be good fathers. For the salvation of the world. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. I pray this was a blessing to you. If it is a blessing to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share these videos. It really does help us a great deal. Speaking of helping us, if you'd like to support this media outreach, go to our Patreon site at Faith Encouraged on Patreon.com. You can also visit us at our website at faithencouraged.org and write me at frbarnabas at faithencouraged.org. I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless you.